Morning, everybody. I am Bear with BearIndependent.com. They call me the Oso Independiente, uh, Oso Hermano, the peanut butter bear, the proud leader of the tactical alpaca response team. We are here talking about uh, lessons from a hurricane, real life, SHTF, real life, SHTF. And we're going to do a series of episodes on this based upon the things that we've learned and relearned and had confirmed uh, through disaster relief uh, to various parts of the world, but most recently, Hurricane Michael in Panama City, Florida. Now, if you're interested in contributing to our efforts there, you can go to GoFundMe.com slash BearNation or GoFundMe.com slash Gilbert's Op Fund. And you can go to bearindependent.com or nightrunners.org. I'll put links to all this down below. And you can see pics and video of the stuff that we've been doing there. And di dive a little bit deeper on um, the scope of the missions that we're performing there. So, lesson one from a hurricane is uh, gray man. Gray man. What do I mean by that? Well, gray man is a, is a constant meme that comes up in the preparedness community that mostly has to do with urban and suburban um, dwellers who have the intention of flying beneath the radar, generally speaking, to evac out of where they are, to bug out from where they are to where they should have probably been in the first place, a place with a lower population density. So Gray Man revolves around this idea that we are going to fly underneath the radar. Now, it's also important to note, I talked about this recently on a Patreon video, that Gray Man in the suburbs sticks out like a sore thumb out here in the wilderness and vice versa, right? And so I guess you got to dress for the occasion is what I'm saying. So, you know, you go walking down the street here in your, you know, Tommy polo and a nice pair of faded jeans. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Right. But if I go walking through a nice neighborhood and we'll just say in downtown Dallas with, uh, you know, a sleeveless T-shirt and some ripped Carhartt work pants and some logging boots, people are going to ask the same question. Who the hell is this guy? Right. So dress for the part. Now. Some examples of this down in Florida, Panama City, Florida. Coffee provided by our brother, the NWA Prepper. You should see him here on YouTube or throw him a buck at uh, AdventureFrontier.com. All the plugs. All the shameless plugs. Don't care. We had one guy. We went to this shelter. And we actually had two incidents at the same shelter where we were bringing food to a subset of the population that was on, like actively on right now, or coming down from various types of drugs that still needed to be fed and loved on. And um, we went in force, we dropped off food, and we ended up pulling out of there because the situation was not appropriate for the group that we took. I mean, we had children and, and the whole nine. And so it wasn't a good idea to stay there. So we didn't. Um, but we did leave a couple of security guys and the Reverend Gilbert there to disperse the food that was brought. And one of our guys got called out in front of the building <laughs> by this guy who was clearly geeked out on meth. And you're like, well, I would never go there. What if there goes to you? Okay. So just Quit being, uh, what's the word I'm looking here? What's a nice word for this? Listen. Okay. Quit looking for excuses as to why this would never be you and listen. One of our guys was accused by a dude who was geeked out on meth, um, of being a cop. He's going, listen, bro, I'm not a cop. You need to simmer down. I'm not a cop. He's like, man, I know a cop when I see one. And zappa da ba da ba shabba da ba da you, you guys are just trying to jam me up. You're trying to cheer at me up. And like, he takes his shirt off and lob. You guys, I, I, I ain't trying to get in there and get arrested and blah, blah, blah. Like, look, man, we just got food. I'm not a cop. Man, I know a cop when I see one. Well, he's not a cop in Florida, but he is a cop. And he volunteered his time to come help. And it's like, okay. 
in this environment, he was not gray manning hard enough because he got made by a dope fiend. Right? Lesson learned. Another one of our guys is a tactical instructor. And he was one of the security guys that stayed behind. And he gray man so hard, hoodie up, shifty eyes, shades on, just trying to play the part of these dope fiends that were there, that uh, he almost got the cops called on him. Whole other end of the spectrum. <laughs> so, where on the spectrum? How often do you gray man? What environment are you gray manning in? Right? See, that matters. That really matters. You have to adapt to the environment. If you're going to adapt to your environment, you need to know what the environment is, right? And so that's going to take much more than this is my gray man bag and I'm going to walk through this neighborhood that I've never been in before, never walked through before, don't know where I'm going, don't know what I'm doing there. I'm going to look out of place. And then at what point do you blow your gray man cover? We'll just say in the uh, first instance where there was about to be an altercation between dope fiend and cop, not a cop. At what point do you go, I'm not a cop, I'm not a cop, I'm not a cop. And then that guy gets up in your face and you go, just kidding. Back up. Now your cover's blown, right? Or in the other instance where one of our security guys was gray manning so hard that he was perceived as a threat by all the other dope fiends who wanted to call the cops on him. <laughs> then what happens? The cops go up and you're like, ah, actually, bro, we're just in this neighborhood operating, trying to bless and love on people. Uh, but your cover's still blown, right? So there's definitely a sweet spot here. A part of that, especially with your, your urban operators out there, operators, you need to know the neighborhoods you're going to be in or be passing through because you got to fit in, right? And you're going to stand out like a sore thumb if you don't fit in, if you don't know the lay of the land and just your body language, the way you carry yourself. You know, it's, it's one thing to just kind of be all lackadaisical. It's another thing to have command presence. Command presence sticks out, especially to people who know how to look for it. So that might be something you actually need to train away not so much that you end up getting the cops called on you but you need to be able to blend in okay so part of that is doing your recon part of that is perhaps even having an advance party that's going and looking and reporting back hey can we move through this neighborhood yeah we can but uh we are not going to fit in we should probably address that now gray man is very much so um, I feel like it's a crutch for a lot of preppers. I'm just going to gray man. I'm just going to blend in. Are you? You probably blend in with your surroundings now because to a large degree, you've adapted to them and they've adapted to you. There's been a synthesis between you and your environment right now, but you start operating in environments that aren't yours, passing through environments that aren't yours, and you're going to raise flags. So you should start doing that now. And then that begs the question, what is your gray man edc look like this is a video that we recently did on patreon but i'll paraphrase here what are you carrying and are you able to carry it without getting made meaning do people know at a glance pff, man you're not fooling anybody if you got a 60 pound rucksack on with a ruck cover that's gonna show you know even just carrying i carry a, a coleman 38 liter green bag it's it's like bright green and it's got um reflective tape on it great bright green black and reflective tape it's obvious and i don't load it so full that it looks like i'm carrying mortar rounds and belt fed ammunition you know <laughs> like no man it just looks like a backpack it's a very capable backpack but that's what it looks like and i have to carry myself in such a way if i'm trying to be a gray man which i'm not good at Right? I'm a big dude. I stick out. I, I just have a presence. And it's, man, it doesn't matter how deep you're carrying. All but a very small portion of the population can't carry so deeply and so effectively that a trained eye can't tell they're carrying. Right? So it's what are you carrying? How are you carrying it? What's your body language? And as, as for what you're carrying, gray man? I mean, I'll just run my pockets real quick. Pistol. Tourniquet. Reload, lighter, got a cell phone battery over here, 
Spider Co. And a WowTac A1S flashlight, cell phone, wallet, you know, your papers. Here's a cell phone, you know. That's pretty much your Gray Man EDC. That's your line one of your Gray Man, right? So, how are you carrying it? What are you carrying? And you need to be able to carry it in such a way that you're not attracting a ton of attention. Um, yeah, that's all the things. We put all the things back. Good. So, you need to understand the environment you're operating in. You need to understand how to not be made. Part of that is going to be practicing operating in that environment, carrying the load that you expect to carry in that environment. If you're turning heads, people are looking at you, you've gotten made. Start over. Try again. Right? So that's lesson one from a hurricane. Gray man. Uh, don't gray man so hard that you get the cops called on you. And don't gray man so poorly that people think you are the cops. And much love to both of my brothers who were involved in this. And uh, But absolutely learning opportunities. And we did an after action report on all of these things that we talked about and that we're going to talk about in these episodes. We have covered all of this when we were on site. Which is one of the reasons we do these things. Because it's phenomenal training. And if you just want to think about the expertise that's in the room that's on site we've got um we've got an emergency response team that's deployed to 27 different natural disasters we had half a dozen marines four army guys two airmen two squids two federales um a handful of law enforcement operators law enforcement officers i'm sorry uh myself a couple of other former contractors um to say nothing of the just the expertise of setting up and breaking down camp, support structure, the construction expertise that was on site. I mean, we did everything. We trained everything. The whole thing is a weekend of training and blessing. And so part of what I want to do with these episodes is deliver to you the takeaways for y'all that you can learn from our mistakes and our training on site there so that we can bring it to you. But I would also encourage you that for our next deployments that are coming up, we're going back to Florida and we're going to Nebraska as well. For these next deployments, you can hit us up at bear dot, bearindependent.com, go to the missions tab and there's a sign up form. If you wanna get on the newsletter for what's coming next as far as deployments go, just go to the missions tab, put your info in on that sign up form. We won't spam you. We don't sell your information. I don't care about any of that crap. This is just so that we can go help people serve the most high, serve our fellow man and train together. So that's lesson one, gray man. Lessons from a hurricane. Shalom.